some men sing of lovers born. I sing of days long gone. James Gordon Bennett founded the New York Herald on May 6, 1835. He was inspired to try his fortunes in the New World by the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. Well, well, you're uh, new here, aren't you, Miss Shoemaker? Well, I'm not. You see, I, too, work for Mr. Bennett. As a matter of fact, I wrote that speech, so uh, spare me, please. But Mr. Bennett said that he's never to be disturbed while he's composing a piece. Miss Shoemaker, I arrived back in New York this afternoon after spending three weeks in Washington where I did nothing but wait in outer offices. Now, this evening I was having dinner at Delmonico's with a lovely lady when I received a message from Mr. Bennett commanding me to come here immediately that was most urgent. Now, uh, he evidently didn't inform you that he's expecting me. Would you be a good girl and tell Mr. Bennett I'm here? Uh, well, excuse me, Mr. Harris. Yes? There's a Mr. Harris here. He says he has an appointment with you. Yes. Come in, Harris. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. I wish you would write as well as you dress. Oh. Well, it all depends on the incentive, sir. Tonight, the incentive is much prettier than the people I interview. Well, did you have enough incentive to see Polk? No, I didn't, sir. Why not? Because he refused to see me. Ah. Huh? You did. Hmm. So that little man in the White House is afraid to discuss the Oregon question with the New York Herald. It seems so, sir. Hmm. Huh. Here. The Oregon Trail by Francis Parkman. Well? Read it. Right now? This confounded book has caused thousands of feeble-minded failures to pull up stakes and set out to be burned and murdered, robbed and ruined, crossing in wagons over the so-called Oregon Trail. <laughs> Do you know what the Oregon question is, Mr. Harris? No, I don't, sir. I didn't get a chance to ask Mr. Polk. It's a question of war, Mr. Harris. War? I have information that Polk has sent or is sending army men disguised as settlers into Oregon. I want this information verified. In short, Mr. Harris, I want you to go to Oregon. Me? Oh, Mr. Bennett, I'm hardly what you'd call the pioneer type. I, uh... If we cannot get the news about Oregon and Washington, we'll get it on the trail itself. Start packing your bags at once. Mr. Bennett, I'm having dinner at Delmonico's. The young Chancellor. lady is waiting for... Yes, sir. And on your way out, tell Miss Shoemaker to get me a pickled herring. A pickled herring. And some milk. And some milk. Mr. Bennett, I'd say your reputation for being a courageous man is well founded. Well, you will rendezvous with the men of your command. Arrangements have been made for you to travel with a civilian wagon train being led by Army Scout George Seaton, S-E-T-O-N, leaving from Westport. Now, your group will be one of several carefully chosen units moving into the Oregon Territory. You will travel as civilians, as this mission must be kept secret. Repeat that, secret. Three. Upon arrival at Fort Laramie, you will report your group to Major 
Major Dexter, D-E-X-T-E-R, for further orders. Four, the overall purpose of this mission is to prepare for the eventuality of war. God forbid. I, uh, I beg your pardon, Mr. President. The eventuality of war. Yes, sir. And to defend the rights of 6,000 good Americans already settled in Oregon. And... Yes? The British ambassador, Mr. President. Oh, good. So I'm in. Add whatever is necessary to that to clarify it, and take it yourself to Captain Wayne in person. At West Point, sir? No, at the uh, Army Hospital here in Washington. He's recovering from a wound. Yes, sir. Sir Richard Wallingham, Ambassador for Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Welcome back, Mr. Ambassador. <laughs> I'm glad to see you, Sir Richard. Sir. <laughs> I trust you had a quiet crossing from England? The Atlantic Ocean knows who rules the waves, Mr. Polk. As well, certain minor interruptions. Uh, 1812, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I trust Her Majesty is in good health. Uh, 27. Is anyone ever in bad health? <laughs> 27. All problems have solutions. In that case, Mr. President, perhaps a young queen and a young nation can come to terms. That is my earnest desire, Sir Richard. This is the territory where we mean to add new stars to our flag. I can foresee a time when we shall have as many as 30 sovereign states, yes, perhaps even 32. Nothing can keep us from expanding as far as to the Pacific Ocean. Now, please don't wince, Sir Richard. A 20-year postponement agreed upon by our two nations for the eventual settlement of the Oregon boundary dispute has expired. It seems a tragedy. All this furor over a wilderness mainly populated by red-skinned barbarians. Now, if the situation is as simple as that, sir, there'll be no opposition from Her Majesty's government. Nothing is ever quite that simple with Her Majesty's government. Well, at any rate, I can't see your government risking a war over a territory populated mostly by red-skinned barbarians. But we will. Very well, sir. I shall so report your ultimatum to Her Majesty's ministers. Good day, Mr. President. train are you going on, Mr. Harris? A uh, man named Seaton's. You know where I can find him? Uh, try there. Bowers might know where he's at. Thank you. I be of assistance, ma'am. Take your hands off me. I don't know you, young man. Let me go. Ah! 
Point there, ma'am. Is this your wagon, Tenderfoot? It's my wagon, and I expect you to pay for the damage. All right, here's your pay. <laughs> you to pay for the damage. seem to be responsible for this man's behavior, I presume you'll also be responsible for the damage he caused that wagon. You heard me move. May I uh, apologize for my friend's behavior, ma'am? George Wayne, at your service. Who's going to fix my wagon wheel? I'll, uh, I'll have it taken care of. Ellis? Yes, sir. I sincerely hope nobody was hurt, ma'am. No, Mr. Wayne. Thank you very much. Bye. Is there anything I can do but say thank you? Well, you could tell me your name. Mine's Neil Harris. It's Prudence. Prudence Cooper. Prudence. That's a very pretty name. Uh, these are yours, I believe, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure, sir. Uh, well, I guess I'd better go see to Grandma. Goodbye. Thanks again. Goodbye. Garrison! I'll be with you in just a moment, sir. I caught you. Take care, Brother Bowers. No slanders, if you please. What have you got in your hand? Destiny, which is written on my empty palm. The other one. The lines of fate, the moons of Saturn. I ask you, sir, do I look like a common thief? I wouldn't say there was anything common about you, sir. Spoken like the gentleman you obviously are. From London or the boulevards of Paris. New York. I represent a newspaper, Mr. Bennett's Herald. Aha, uh -huh. a man of letters. Not just a reporter. Harris is the name. Oh, it's an honor, Mr. Bennett. I mean, uh, Mr. Harris. We'll outfit you from head to heel. If you're not going to buy anything, will you please get out? And now, sir, uh, where shall we begin? Mr. Bowers, I came in here to ask you if you could help me locate a man named Seaton. Of course. But if you're going on the trail, first the first. <laughs> I uh, bumped into something, it seems. Explain this. Caught red-handed. Now you see, sir, why our prices seem high. Isn't it possible those things might have fallen into the handkerchief by accident? That's exactly how it happened, sir. In a trice. The town marshal will have you in a trice, and a trice, you, you thieving scoundrel. Thou shalt not bear false witness, Brother Bowers. Mr. Bowers, if you will tell me the value of the contents of the handkerchief, I will be glad to pay for them. 
Then I hope you'll be kind enough to tell me where I can find Mr. Seaton. Now, how much? Half price to you, sir. Fifteen dollars even. That's half price, huh? Shut him, Brother Harris, as you would the foul play. Why, these paltry trifles, accidentally acquired, aren't worth three bits. You keep out of this, Brother Garrison. Mr. Bennett's money. Here you are, fifteen dollars. And uh, don't forget to give some to your church. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. And now for your purchases for the Oregon Trail. Oh, this fine gentleman doesn't want any of your moth-eaten merchandise. You get out now. I'll be most happy to drive you to Mr. Seaton's headquarters, Brother Harris. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Garrison. But I suppose I will need some clothes and things for the trail. Oh, caveat emptor. That means let the buyer beware. Well. Now, the first thing you need is a money belt. Money belt? Oh, you mean uh, in case someone wants to steal my money? Yes. And you'll need shirts and a few pair of pants. My wagon. Allow me a comment, sir. No clad in the garb of a rustic, you have the order of a prince. <laughs> You have the aura of a man with trees. <laughs> you have a most discerning eye, sir. Apple trees. Saplings to populate the distant slopes of Oregon. Get aboard. Really? Well, these things kind of high off the ground, don't they? The view's all the better. Stay your shanks. Thanks. Watch with your feet, hooves. Away, my noble steeds! Brother Seaton? Neil Harris, the newer author, wants to join up with a wagon train. Got a wagon? You'd like to find a place in one. I can pay my way. You may have to work your way, young fella. Put yourself aboard my wagon over there. I'll uh, see if I can fix up with a horse tomorrow. Fine. And uh, where will I sleep? Same place you're going to sleep for the next five months. Providing you last that long. Under the wagon. Under the wagon, hmm? Miss Prudence. Uh, now that you've joined the wagon train, I, I thought I'd come and ask you to have supper with us. Well, how did you know I joined? How did you know I joined? Brother Garrison has been preaching the uh, gossip. Oh, well, I'd uh, be very happy to dine with you. Good. Uh, come on. You've been a failure all your life. Don't know why you had to come more than 3,000 miles just to keep on being it. Brought another guest for dinner. Oh, glad you could come, Mr. Harris. So am I. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Harris. Mr. Wayne, see you got rid of your fighting clothes. Oh, yes. I, uh, I don't wear them when I go out socially. Uh, would one of you bring the stew pot to the table, please? Oh, yes. No! It's hot. Now, <laughs> oh, I see you know your way around a campfire. Who doesn't? I don't. Mr. Harris, are you a failure? A failure, ma'am? Yes, I guess you might say I am. I work for a newspaper. My son's a failure. Well, not from my point of view. Do you have to say things like that, Mama, especially to perfect strangers? You mustn't mind, Grandma. She really loves everyone. Choose your places, gentlemen. We're just family. <laughs> Would you uh, 
Join me for supper, Grandma Cooper? Oh, la Oh, why don't you stop acting a lie? Just as bad as telling one. Why don't you go and sit where you meant to in the first place? Oh, do I have your place, Mr. Harris? Oh, no, no, Mr. Cooper. I'll sit right over here. Thank you. Uh, would you like to change places with me? Yes, I would. Uh, Papa, you belong up ahead at the table. Oh, of course, Prudence. Thank you. Oh, Lord, as we start on our long journey into an unknown land, we give thanks for all thy wondrous blessings. We thank thee this night for the bread we break together in thy name. We know not, O oh Lord, the many hardships which await us on the trail, but we ask thee to stand and watch over us and protect us in the new land. Thy will be done. Amen. Yes, sis. It goes around like that, and she comes back here and tightens. That's all there is to it. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Seaton. <laughs> Ain't you, uh, ain't you never ridden a horse before? Oh, yes, yes. Quite a while ago, though. I remember the horse had rockers under it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, Satan, what in heaven's name is holding us up? Well, I guess I am. I'm sorry. I'm Wagon Master here, Mr. Decker. This train moves when I say so. Well, don't be so uppity. I'm not a lackey, you know. Yeah, I know. I know something else, too. Your wagon's overloaded. I don't think so. You don't, eh? Well, just remember, I warned you. Mount to the left side, son. Yeah, thanks. Here. Come on, boy. Squaw man. Is that bad? Would you marry an Indian, my friend? Well, I don't know. That all depends. I. Whoop, whoop. I wouldn't want to make any snap judgments about a thing like that until the problem arose, you know. Yep, here we go. Whoop. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Well, Jesse, old friend, we're starting on another trip to Oregon. Ah, we've kept ahead of them so far. Ain't no time to start worrying now. <laughs> we're moving out! <laughs> Orchard, Mr. Garrison. Oh, flourishing like the Green Bay tree. How's my literary friend? Yeah, still just a reporter. Oh, now, don't belittle your talent, sir. Oregon can use those gifts of yours. Oregon awaits men of all sorts. The sowers and the reapers, the hewers of wood and the drawers of water, the workers and the dreamers. Which are you, worker or a dreamer? I serve the bringer of trees. Apple trees to Oregon. Poet laureates of 
the orchards to come will sing of my trees. Ah, they're trees of health and beauty. Yes, sir, I shall plant them, and you shall write of them, and one day your children shall eat of them. You sound as though you were in love with them. Ah, you, sir, are a man of rare discernment. Have you noticed my apparel? Well, I could hardly help but notice it, Mr. Garrison. This, Mr. Harris, is a wedding coat. Well, allow me to congratulate you. Yes. Congratulate me on escaping the snares of a she-devil. I was deserted at the altar, sir, left standing like a stunned whippoorwill, betrayed by a trusted friend. I wear this coat in the trail, sir, partly not to waste it. A fine tailor made it for me. And partly to remind myself never again to speak in way of love to a woman. Trees are my women. Well, I say trees were a lot safer, Mr. Garrett. Wagons! say so, Mama, we'll go back home. No. No, this old tree wouldn't take roots there either. You've got a dream, Jerry. Something you never had before. I know, Mama, but... Keep you... still. I want to listen to the singing. You're married. Thank you. Looking for 
something? I didn't think you heard me. <laughs> I heard you. Beautiful night, isn't it? Yeah. Say, Seaton, I was just getting a drink of water, and Jesse grabbed the dipper and gave the water barrel a couple of whacks. Now, why did he do that? Oh, that's an old trick of his. You see, when he bangs the barrel, the polywogs all go down to the bottom. Polywogs? You miss the moms, don't you, see? I miss them. I was born in them, raised in them, married in them, had the kids in them. Where's your family now? See, I'm a, I'm what they call a squaw man. I married me a full-blooded Sioux. One night when I was out hunting, a bunch of Arapahoes raided our village. When I got back, the only thing left alive was old Jesse there. It cut his tongue out so he couldn't tell me nothing about it. That was a long time ago. Yes, sir. Long time ago. Well, son, wherever I go, I always carry the mountains around inside me. Hmm? Man carries a heap of things around inside him. Keep a thing. Shine them burned out wagons, Mr. Wayne. Why'd they come riding up in the middle of the night? Just to look us over, that's all. It's a good thing you ain't worth a hoot with a rifle. Why didn't they start shooting when Brother Decker did? When you fire a gun in the air, that's a sign of peace to an engine. If they, they can see your gun ain't loaded. They thought it was me fired the shot. <laughs> Jesse, get all the horses inside the circle. Mm. May I walk with you to your wagon, Miss Prudence? Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Mr. Harris? Mr. Harris? Were those real wild Indians? Oh, no, Richard. They were friendly Indians. Darn. Anything I'm due for you, sir? How many times have I told you not to serve me? Of course I have it. Sorry. Is anything wrong, sir? Grandma Cooper. Has she had these fevers before? Twice since we've been on the trail. Take this, and it might do you some good. Won't you be all right? Of course I will. Right. 
Prudence. You used to sing that song, remember, Jerry? Yes, Mom. Sing it for me. He says I'm never, never, never alone. That forever, ever, ever I'm his own. The still, small voice is filled with purest love. I know it comes from heaven above. He says I'm never, never, never alone. That forever, ever, ever, I'm his own. Looking for a lucky star? I suppose so. Did you find the right one? Yes. And wished on it. She's going to die. It'll always be there. Not only to cry on. The blazing sun beat down upon the parched and dusty plain. Each mile that led to Laramie was one with thirst and pain. The dry wind blew the clouds away as though with Satan's breath in faith alone, the train moved on. The faith that conquers death. Ain't no rain, that just guy. Well, we should get to a river pretty soon, shouldn't we? Ain't no rivers, just streams. How far? Uh, three, four days. That means we'll run short of water. We're running short now. Thanks for telling me. Oh, boy. Makes me homesick for my rose garden in Warwickshire. But yeah, sometimes I wish I were back in Nashville practicing law. Again. Well, to matters of state. Your government's latest proposal on the Oregon question is completely unacceptable. Why do you concern yourself with so distant a frontier? The government of England concerns itself with frontiers even more distant. That is our tradition, Mr. President. And this is our country, Mr. Ambassador. You may convey to Her Majesty's government my counter-proposal. That the boundary of the Oregon Territory be established at latitude 54 degrees 40 minutes. That, sir, is final. There is no alternative? 54-40, Sir Richard. Or what? Or fight.
Is this your water, Seaton? Be quiet, Decker. Be quiet? Be quiet? We paid good money to have this bungler guide us through the wilderness. This is all his fault. How far to the next water, Seaton? Five days, maybe six. We'll collect all the water we got on the train. We'll ration it from my wagon. ain't hard to stand any time. For you, maybe. There's a doctor at Fort Laramie. How long do you think it'll take to get there? Two weeks, maybe. Two weeks. Five. Four. How's Grandma Cooper? Fever hasn't broken. Give her this. That's your ration. She needs it more than I do. Seaton says there's a creek bed about a mile south of here. With any luck, we'll be back with some water. Her was my best specimen. The only one on leaf. You coyote. People die in a thirst, and you stealing their water. It's my ration. You dirty, thieving coyote. It's my own ration. I only use my own ration. Stop it! These are living things!
Someday we'll finish a fight. Right now, I've got an appointment with a drink of water. Someday I'll kill you. It's raining, man! Wake up, Mama! Can you hear me? Now the powder's in. Put the gun back together. Put the keeper in. Now put the bullets in. Now to push the bullets home. Well, you've got quite an audience, Ellis. Yes. I don't know much about guns, but that certainly is an impressive-looking weapon. One of these is equal to six guns. 
You mean instead of being able to fire it only once, you can fire it six times? That's right. New type. A fellow named Sam Colt made them. How does it work? Every time you pull a hammer back, it puts a new round in position. Round? A bullet. Oh. What's this? Move over, Johnny. Wow! You do that again, Mr. Ellis? Ain't for you, Lucy, honey. Well, you're quite a shot, Ellis. And that's quite a gun. Ellis! You don't know better than that. Yes, sir. Mr. Wayne, I was looking at Ellis's gun. I noticed it has B Company stamped on it. That means it's government property, doesn't it? Or am I mistaken? Your mistake could be in asking. Questions seem to bother you a lot, Mr. Wayne. Only the man who asks them. Well, that's too bad, because my livelihood happens to depend on questions. And I suggest you go back east and ask them. Out here, questions can get you killed. What do they want? Horses? Goods? What? They want me. They, they, was, they was only one. You sure? Dead sure. Jesse, take up your position in the rear. Our wagons will be in the lead from now on. You're riding in the rear, too, Mr. Harris. Wayne. It's pretty obvious to me now just who you are and why you're with this train. I gave you an order, Mr. Harris. I intend to send a dispatch to my favor, the Herald, at the earliest opportunity. I shall do my best to explain in my story that every evidence points to your being in command of a detail of soldiers. I can tear up your dispatch, sir. And I can write another one, Captain Wayne. That is your rank, isn't it? Rizard. Yes, sir. Take charge of Mr. Harris. See if you can persuade him to stay close to his wagon. I won't let him out of my sight. After you, Mr. Harris. Prudence. Miss Prudence. 
Yes. Matthew, your sister. You were under guard. Canvas walls are not a prison make, no wagon spokes a cage. I'm sorry to get you up this time in act, Miss Prudence, but I want to say goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Harris. Oh, Mr. Wayne. Isn't it uh, past your bedtime? I told you to stay in Seaton's wagon. Oh, I was just out getting a breath of fresh air. Well, I shall rejoin Mr. Brizard, uh, who was catching 40 winks when I left. Charming companion, Mr. Brizard. Charming. Good night, Miss Prudence. Mr. Wayne. Captain. You're drunk. Oh, no, Captain. Where's your gun? Your knife. And your horse. My horse is gone. Daisy. That means Harris is gone, too. Under military regulations, I could have you shot. Take my horse. You're going after him. Tonight? Tonight. Yes, sir. And if I have to, shoot him. Be my pleasure. Try to run away again now, or I'll beat you worse than I ever beat your squaw mother. Well, get off and water them horses. You try to run away again. Howdy, Gabe. Where's all the soldiers? Place looks dead, Clayman. Don't know for sure. They just up and went and rode south. That's so? They coming back? Took everything with them, including most of my business. You ain't just telling me this to cut the price of my furs, are you, Clayman? Them first is all right, but <laughs> who is going to buy them? You are. How do you do? My name's Neil Harris, and uh, this is my traveling companion, Daisy. Oh, I guess she doesn't speak English, Daisy. <laughs> of course, I don't speak Indian either, so that makes us even. I don't really think that makes too much difference, though, to you. I mean, take you and me. You don't understand English, and I don't understand horse, but <laughs> we get along very well together. You know, uh, I'd never seen an Indian until just recently. Of course, I'd uh, seen a lot of pictures of them and all that, but uh, never a real live Indian. 
didn't realize they could be so beautiful. You are very beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Oh, that was fair. Daisy, I knew that was going to happen. I just knew it. Enough. Now take them first and get out of here. You ain't gonna shoot nobody, Clayman. Especially me. Guess you was hoping he'd have guts enough to kill your old pa, eh, Shona? Someone will kill you sooner or later. Just you wait till I get you home in the mountains. Just you wait. Now, give me that hundred dollars. It's a fair price. But I, I ain't got a hundred dollars. All right, then. I'll beat it out of you. Uh, just a minute, gentlemen. I don't uh, wish to interfere with what may be normal business procedure here in the West, but I have a suggestion which may be a little less bloodthirsty. Who are you? My name's Harris. I'm a newspaper man. I have to send a dispatch to New York, and there are certain people who might try to stop me from sending it. So here's my proposition. I'll give you $100 for your furs and another 100 on top of it if you see to it that my dispatch gets to the telegraph man at Westport. I'll get it back there for you. Give me the money. I'll pay you as soon as I finish writing it. It'll take a while. Now, just a minute, stranger. Any deal made in this store entitles me to a commission. You can have the furs for a commission. Huh? <laughs> Paper and ink is right on the table. Thank you. They must have pulled out right after I left. Is there another way out of the stockade? For an extra commission, there is. For another hundred, I could hide you in Shona's village. I guess men can afford it. All right, I'll give you another hundred. You're not going to hide him with them redskins, are you? What's wrong with them? Bring the horses around to the back. Hmm. Place seems to be abandoned. Take over, Carmichael. Yes, sir. Soldiers. Pulled out all of them. Any we... message for George Wayne? I'll find out. All I've got is a letter here for a Capitaine George Wayne. I'm Captain Wayne. Don't look like a Capitaine. Funny thing, when the soldiers moved out, some of them were saying, remember the Alamo. What, what is an Alamo? Look, sis, jawbreakers. Prudence, I've got to talk to you alone. Hey, look, Dad, jawbreakers. You want some jawbreakers, son? Huh? Yeah. How much are they? Penny a piece. How many you want? Is that the cheapest you've got? How much cheaper can you get than penny a piece? Well, you couldn't let us have just one for nothing, could you? What's the matter? Don't you even have a penny? No, sir. Then why did you ask me for the price, huh? I didn't know what else to say. 
Well, that's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Who gives something for nothing to somebody I never even saw in my life? I, I don't know what kind of people are coming to the West these days. Just because their kid wants some candy, somebody wants me to dig right down into my pocket and, and, and just get, get uh, sorry. Oregon boundary question has been settled. And I'm, well, I'm under new orders now. And you have to return east? Not east, south. We're at war with Mexico. Prudence, uh, nobody knows how long this war is going to last. And I, well, that is, I, I, No matter how long, darling, I'll wait. In Oregon? Oregon or anywhere else on this earth. Hastings. I don't think they'll take kindly to that. Well, you've got to do something. He's in a bad way. K.A. Sean. Wait a minute. Dig on. Tell him, tell him off me. Tell him. What are you doing? You. You won't be needing this. I wish. Might you get you. K.A. Sean. You damn renegade. Kick and square. You'll have plenty of time to squirm. Like us mountain men always squirm when the butchers kill off our buffalo and our game and the soldiers drive the Indians off their own earth to starve and die. Anything you want, just yell. <laughs> We seek a panaye. Nahi lunche. Nahi lunche. Nahi lunche. Reside. Yeah. What do you think they're going to do with us? Why don't you ask Big Chief Tall Hat? I'm not joking. Maybe you think I am. Tied here two days. Wait till tomorrow, when your tongue starts to fall. Maybe there won't be a tomorrow. You might want a drink. I wish I had my weapon with faith in you. Now, you say you're sorry, soldier. Want to say you're sorry? You want to say you're sorry, soldier? Go ahead, Bizarre. It's no disgrace to be thirsty. I'm sorry. Good, that's better. Now say it again, and I'll turn you loose. How many times I gotta say it? Lots and lots. I'm sorry. How's the cutter? Cut 
Now, get up, soldier. Jago. What are you going to do with him? Seems you ought to reckon what I'm going to do with you. is leading the young warriors to the fort. All will be killed if we don't warn them. Can we get there ahead of them? We'll ride fast. Come. to attack the fort. Now, what do you base your information, Mr. Girl, Shona. I was captured, so was Broussard. She cut me loose. It's true, Captain Wayne. Lippert, break out those new revolvers. See that every man on the wagon train gets one. Instruct them as best you can on how to load and fire them. Yes, sir. Break out those revolvers. Yes, sir. I want you men with the Colt revolvers to take up your positions along those walls. If the Indians should storm the gate or scale the walls, I want you to fall back to those two buildings and keep them in a crossfire.
Saxon to the gate. Saxon! Drive those mules to the gate! It is because of this I renounce my people. was claiming to get my dispatch back to Westport. And also my resignation. Thank you. 
100 years and 10. But time can never dim the fame of those heroic men who never faltered on the trail until the West was won. Those men of old in wagons rode, rode west to Oregon. 